The Boeing 777X versus Boeing 777-300ER. Let's take a look at some of the differences between the two different generations of Boeing 777. Before that, there was some background context. Since its first flight in 2002, the 777-300ER quickly set the standards for future large long-range white bodies to come. With its blend of efficiency and performance never seen before by any other aircraft at the time, it was a hit with the world's major airlines. Nothing came close, and this ended an era for the quad jets such as the A340 on these longer routes. Airbus, however, wasn't gonna let Boeing dominate this important long-range widebody market space. They realized they needed a brand new white body to compete with the 777-300ER as well as the brand new newly launched 787 with the newest technologies at the time. Eventually, they launched the Airbus A350 in 2006. It matched the 787's efficiency, but the 777's performance. The A350-1000 could carry the same number of passengers and fly further than the 777-300ER, all while burning around 25% less fuel thanks to new technology. Needless to say, unless Boeing did something, they were gonna lose the 777-300ER market space to Airbus. Boeing therefore worked hard with 777 customers and decided to build upon the 777's legacy and upgrade it with the same new technologies developed for the 787. During the 2013 Dubai Air Show, Boeing finally revealed their counter-attack, the new large Boeing 777X. It went head to head with the larger A350-1000 but with more seats. So, between the 777-300ER launched in around 2002 to the newest 777-9 launched more than a decade later, what's the difference and which is the more outstanding aircraft? Before we find out, if you're new here, a warm welcome and be sure to hit the subscribe button for more great videos on the way. Performance the new 777X has the same 351 ton takeoff weight as its predecessor. However, since it burns less fuel, this means it can fly further or carry more passengers. The larger Dash 9 is stretched by 2.87 meters over the Dash 300ER and can carry around up to 40 more seats. The 777-300ER set the standard for performance, carrying 396 passengers to class over 7,370 nautical miles. The equivalent 777-9 now carries 426 two-class and flies up to 7,285 nautical miles. So the 777-X carries more passengers and also not to forget more cargo. However, shockingly, at least initially when entering service, it does have around 85 or so nautical miles less range. Engines The 777-300ER uses a gem of an engine the GE90-115B. It was the world's first jet engine to feature new carbon matrix fan blades and allows for a larger and more powerful engine. With a 128-inch fan diameter, it was one of the largest with a bypass ratio of 9 to 1. It was also the world's most powerful, producing up to 115,000 pounds on the Boeing 777-300ER. The new 777X has the new GE9X engine. It's even bigger than the GE90, it replaces at 134 inches and has a higher bypass ratio of 9.9 .9 to 1. The new engines alone account for around 10% fuel burn improvement. Shockingly, however, it's actually rated for less thrust than the GE90 on the 777X at 110,000 pounds of thrust each. The 777X with its larger wingspan does not need that much thrust on takeoff and reducing the thrust also reduces maintenance costs and reduces wear on the engine. Efficiency The 777X claims to be around 12 to 13% more efficient per trip and per seat it's around 20% more efficient thanks to the added seats of the stretch. 777-300ER was the most efficient in the day, burning 8.58 kilograms per kilometer per trip and around 3.11 liters per 100 kilometers per passenger in a typical three-class, 344-seat layout flying 7,200 nautical miles. The 777-9 burns around 7.69 kilograms per kilometer per trip over the same two over the same 7,200 nautical mile mission 
and per seat it burns 2.42 liters per 100 kilometers per passenger in a three class 395 seat layout. In my view, the per seat figures are slightly optimistic. Cabins. The 777-300ER featured the new Boeing signature interior with indirect lighting, new cabin sidewalls, new galley layouts. Optionally available is new IFE and new Wi-Fi. It's an alright cabin but it's noisy and has dry air plus a high cabin altitude of more than 7,000 feet. The tenebrest configuration on the Dash 300ER is really cramped in, meaning 16.9 inch wide economy class seats. Not particularly comfortable. The new 777X features the next generation of Boeing Sky interior inspired from the 787. It has cathedral ceilings, projection mood lighting, plus a much quieter cabin with lower cabin altitude of 6,000 feet and more moist air. Despite having the same aluminum alloy fuselage, it does have larger windows which now dim at the touch of a button optionally. New IFE, Wi-Fi and mood lighting is also standard and included in the list price. The new 777X also has better sound insulation materials which allows for thinner cabin sidewalls, freeing up 5 inches more space up to 235 inches of cabin width now on the 777X. This means 17.2 inch wide economy class seats 10 abreast. Not to be confused with what Boeing is marketing. They are marketing 18 inch wide seat bases, not the seats all round. All in all, the 777X has an improved cabin which is important when going up against the A350. Actual differences. Both have the same takeoff weight, same landing gears, and both have the similar pilot type ratings which allow airlines to operate both seamlessly. The similar type rating allows pilots to transition between both models seamlessly and reduces the pilot transition cost and time associated. The main differences include a 2.87 meter fuselage stretch, the new cabin, but the big big change is the new engine, new nacelle, new pylon, and of course the brand new wing up to 71 meters wide now on the 777X with 3.5 meter folding wingtips at each end of the wing allowing the new 777X to fit into the same airport gates as today's 777. The wings contribute to around 7% fuel burn improvement and the engines around 10%. Orders. The 777-300ER is one of the most popular 777 variants receiving 838 orders. The new 777X has received a total of only 309 and 301 of those are the larger Dash 9 variant. So then, there are the differences. In my view, the 777X is a solid upgrade over the Dash 300ER and certainly built upon the legacy of the 777. It's also the largest twin ever to fly. But in my view, it's less groundbreaking than the 777-300ER was when it was launched back in the day. The 777-300ER brought new levels of efficiency and performance to twin-engine long-range aircraft, and it moved the game on towards twin-engine aircraft flying longer distances and replacing quad jets on longer routes. To compete with the A350, Boeing was forced to stretch the 777 and add more seats or to lower the seat mile cost and make the 777X competitive. However, the market has moved away from large 400-seater aircraft like the 777X and are quickly favoring smaller 300-seater wide bodies with the same long range. Aircraft like Boeing's own 787-9 and Airbus's A350-900 are way more popular nowadays. Therefore, the 777-9 moved out of the sweet spot the 777-300ER was and is really too big in today's market. The 777X also brings little new value other than the additional seats not needed in today's market conditions and is badly delayed with the entry into service pushed back by four years. The 777-300ER in my view is still the best 777 especially at the time with a sweet blend of performance and efficiency that set the standard for future long-range large white bodies to come. It changed the way we fly long haul with new levels of performance and efficiency in the twin engine category. Thanks for tuning in and to meet next time, one team, one aviation, one sky ahead.